spirit. I want to do a quick video before I go into work today. Uh, headed for this good ministry, this good business of saving souls and awakening my people. Hey, hey I'm on your team. Um, I said, I'm on your team. I don't know if I said this before. My father was a pastor. Um, he saved many souls. Well known. Great person, you know. Great person. So I never thought that I would, you know. Being the truth or telling people about you know, Yahweh or trying to save anybody's soul. You know, I didn't never want to be like my father. I just wanted to take my own route. Right? But I want to talk about, you know what I'm saying, this targeting individuals being uh, homeless. You know what I'm saying? I seen a lot of homeless people yesterday. It's like one degree outside. They huddled up in the Walmart bathroom stalls. You know what I'm saying? Just to stay warm. Uh, I've dealt with a lot of homelessness all, my, all throughout my whole life since I was 18. 16, my mama put me out the house. You gotta go, you know, so slept in cars, slept outside, slept in tents, getting showered for days, seven days at a time, living in homeless camps. And you gotta have your survival skills together, you know what I mean? By any means necessary, huddling in the bathroom ain't gonna do it. You know what I mean? So it's for all the people that's out there that's homeless. Man, I need to put the pieces together, bro. Get them, get them survival skills together. Right. Because uh, pop off, man. We all gonna be out here. I'm gonna be in the mountains chilling. So, <clears throat> that's that's something I wanted to talk about. At least you let you burn it out. Let me pause it for a second. But, uh, yeah, back with it again, man. You know what I mean? No Man's Land, Alabama. Check a look. No Man's Land. The trees. Huckleberry, Alabama. <laughs> Huckleberry. But, uh, I want to share a little story real quick, man. So when I found out the chick was the gang stalker, right? I played it cool. I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, I put the pieces together or whatever. I go outside. I, said, I didn't know I was surrounded by gay. So I go outside. The neighbor's next door was like, you're going to be homeless. I was like, was that supposed to scare me into staying with her so y'all can keep slow killing me? So I, I, my reply was exactly verbatim what I said. I said, Jesus was homeless. <laughs> so what makes me any better to be homeless? So crazy, man. I think one of my earlier videos, I was sleeping in my car. I did, uh, forgot what the name of that video was, but uh, I was sleeping in my car when the video. So, you know, I know something about being homeless. You know, you got to survive. You know I mean? You got to do the best you can, man. You know what I mean? You got to take showers at the little homeless places. Sometimes you got to stop in the bathroom, wash up. Change your socks. You've been wearing them for about seven days. You got to change your socks. You know, so I see homeless people, man. I try to, you know what I mean, pray for them and, and give them a little change if I got something in my pocket because I know how it is. Everybody ain't a drug addict. Some people are just homeless, man. You know, society, man. You know, keep you in that little bondage or whatever, but it's cool, man. Because actually, for me, for homelessness, for me, it builds character, made me stronger. You know, so, yeah, I want to tap in on that. So, uh, if y'all homeless, man, leave a comment below, you know what I mean? And let me know about your struggles. Um, also, man, after this uh, video, man, it's a uh, little screenshot I did or whatever. This video, man, y'all should check this out, man. It was uh, recorded in 1956. And uh, it's going to blow your mom that it's talking about. So, definitely tap in on that. But yeah, again, man, thank y'all for, uh, for subscribing to my channel, man. We had 220 subscribers. Never thought I would even get one subscriber. I was just trying to put my word out there when I started, so. Yeah, Shalom, man, check out the video. Make sure if y'all like the video, put the thumbs up and share and subscribe. It's your boy G-Rock signing off, man. I'm out. When you think of the future, you likely envision the remarkable technologies that you've seen in comic books and films. You may begin to picture flying cars, 
trains driven by electromagnets, or household robots that will see to your every need. While modern scientists agree that many of these inventions are either unlikely or unnecessary, it may surprise you to learn what the future could actually hold. Imagine being able to share your thoughts with millions of people at once, simply by typing them on a keyboard and sending them through the air. Think of what life will be like when all of the many fixtures of an office, including a typewriter and an entire Rolodex, can fit within a device smaller than a loaf of bread. Consider the vacation plans you could make when a single trip on an airplane is all that's needed to visit anywhere on Earth. Yes, the future certainly looks bright, but it isn't without its darker sides. According to some predictions, obesity will likely run rampant, and political corruption will become so commonplace as to be accepted. People with nothing entertaining or informative to say will broadcast their demands for attention. And once beloved performers will become pushers of snake oil. Perhaps worst of all will be the emergence of a deadly and potentially devastating disease. Think of the last time that you contracted influenza. You were likely bedridden for days, having no appetite or desire to play games. Experts predict that by the year 2020, a new virus will rise, spreading from somewhere in Asia to the rest of the world. And with international travel being available to even the most common citizen, a sickness which would have been contained in years past will quickly spread to all corners of the globe.